Okay, the biblical truth of our hymns, all glory, love, and honor. In the beginning, and we got some hard spelling names, and we're talking French and Spanish and the 18, um, 18, 800 era, so forgive me if we go along, but if you think I've been so hard doing these hymns, biblical truth, you think that Oh, you kicked the Catholic Church. We've got a hymn today. I don't know. Now, I kick the Catholic Church. Yes. But I don't kick the people. There are saved people in the Catholic Church. The Catholic organization and their beliefs and their traditions are against God and Satanic. Now, today's hymn is Theodore of Orleans. Theodolf was also spelled, and it got kinds of names here, and also Theodolf of this. Born 750, probably in Spain, and died 821 in Angers, France. A prelate, which is a classical dignity of a high rank, poet, and one of the leading theologians in the Frankish Empire. He worked for reform of the clergy within his diocese and establish a hospice. In 800, he was the Rome of Char Charlemagne's coronation. And in 804, he succeeded the English scholar Alcom as Charlemagne's chief theolog theological advisor. It was in Bible manuscripts produced under his influence that the Book of Baruch and the letter of Jeremiah, as chapter 6 of the book of Baruch, became part of the Western or Vulgate Bible canon. Now, the book of Baruch is occasionally referred as one Baruch, and it is a book that some put in the Bible that do not belong in the Bible. One of them tradition things of the said Catholic Church. I don't believe those books are biblical order of God and the Holy Spirit. Here's one thing he believed. He believed that you had to offer the less fortunate a seat at your dinner table if you one day were to be wished to have a seat at the banquet of God. Now that's the salvation of works. I'm going to feast at the table of the Lord because of Jesus Christ and the gospel that he suffered and died according to scriptures and was buried. And arose again, according to I'm not going to be saved. I'm not going to be uh, uh, entered into the new, new Jerusalem or anything in the presence of God of anything I do. I mean, that's one of them Catholic things. That's what he, that's what he said. It was his own words. He also mentions in his letters that he enjoyed reading pagan literature, including poems by Virgo and Ovid which he thought may have seemed filled with heresy at first. But underneath the surface had useful morals, which could be applied to Christian morality. You mean like Lewis? Uh, uh, other books that Christians think today that are Christian and are not. You know, the Chronicles and all that other stuff. And... You know, Mr. Potter flying around a broomstick that everybody thinks, you know, oh, they got to be Christian. Charlemagne died. His son, Louis, uh, the pious, suspected Theodore the for of treason. And he was in prison in Anglers in 818, 818. While in prison for conspiring against the king of France, Saint, I again, pronounce, I mispronounced his name, forgive me. Theodore of Orleans wrote the verses that give us the Palm Sunday hymn, All Glory, Lawn, and Honor. Okay, here's the hymn we're doing today. I don't celebrate Palm Sunday. That's the tradition of the Catholic Church and other churches. We don't go to church and we get a palm. I went to a church and we used to get palms. And as a little boy, I beat my grandpa with it and smacked the people in front of me with it. And, you know, divide it into little strings and time and knots. And, but <laughs> as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, I, I don't honor Palm Sunday. It's Jewish. But English trans translation by the Anglican clergy John Mason Neal. 
All right, so this was translated by J John Mason Neal, an Anglican. And I'm going to wonder if some of this may be... I'm left with a big gap about this him and having the foundation of a a Catholic and a Catholic tradition that oh you know in order to get to heaven and sit before God you got to give your table to people who are less fortunate and their tradition and belief but but then you got an Anglican that comes in and translate what uh, Leo Duff of Orleans wrote. Latin hymn, Gloria Las et Honor, which was written by, you know, the Adolf of Orleans. It's a Palm Sunday hymn. We don't have Palm Sunday hymn. Based on Matthew 21, 1 through 11. The occasion of Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The hymn was or originally made of 39 verses or stanzas, however... Only the first 12 lines were sung since a 19th, 9th century published manuscript attributed to St. Gal unto Neil's translation. So there were more than the three that I have here. And I get, what did those 39 verses, why had they been excluded? Were, and I'm, I'm, I'm throwing it out there, I don't know. Were they Catholic? Is this what kept, or what we can find in the Bible? I couldn't find that information. Maybe you can. But I couldn't. Uh, the original Latin words are used by the Roman Catholic alongside the English translation. So they would sing this in, in Latin. Latin is a North African language spoken by the Catholic Church. A probable story from the early 16th century states that in a Palm Sunday procession, King Louis, or Louise, passed the prison in which the dog was housed and heard the prison bishop, so he's a bishop in the church, singing this hymn. According to legend, now if you remember the last hymn we did, when we did Tell Me the Story of Jesus, no, wait a minute, legend, that wasn't Tell the Story of Jesus, that was, uh, excuse me, that was Valentine's. When we did a Valentine study, the wet cloth on the Valentine, Webster's second definition of legend, an idle or ridiculous story told respecting saints. I love that definition. The king was so moved that he freed the of and declared and decreed the singing of all glory, law, and honor on all subsequential Palm Sundays. Now, they say that's a legend. I don't know. Based on Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11, and similar passages, Mark 11, Luke 19, John 12, the text was originally written for the Palm Sunday procession, which we as Christians do not. We do not have Palm Sunday. And if your church does, you're wrong. Okay? Because what? This hymn is Jewish flavor. I'm going to say that right now. I'm going to put that in big bold print Jewish but when one looks at the source a Gentile wicked satanic <clears throat> Catholic organization there is no name Jesus mentioned so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Jewish and Catholic spice <coughs> of this of this hymn in the stanza one all glory Lord and honor to thee, Redeemer, capital R, King, capital K, to whom the lips of the children may sweet hosannas ring. Thou art the King, capital K, of Israel. Thou art David's royal son, capital S, who in the Lord's name cometh, the King and the Blessed One. All right, Lord means to praise. And the only place it shows up in the Bible, Romans 15, 11, again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. There is scripture. <laughs> Knock me over with, with a Mack truck that we're talking about the Catholic Church and we're finding scripture. Now, we're not going to find the King James because this is 800. 
This is 800 years before the King James. But here is scripture. Redeemer. That is true for me and every saved Christian. He is our Redeemer. He purchases us with God's blood. Now, as far as the king, that's Jewish. It's never the church. And this is offered by a religion that has their own government, their own mint, their own army, and their own governing body. Who has a man that sits upon a throne. Who wants a piece of property called Israel. Along with all the world. Children. When it spoke of the children. The lips of the children. Jewish children. In the gospel. Before any Ethiopian eunuch would show up. Reading Isaiah. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Up to the time of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Is primary Jewish. Very few Gentiles. Hosannas. That means save, I beseech you. Ho save us. Save us, Jesus. Now, what would they want to be saved from? To go to heaven? No. They wanted Jesus Christ at that moment. They want the conquering Messiah to get rid of the Roman government and all Gentile nations. Give them that land that has been promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the 12 tribes. Give us this land and give us that free bread you, you gave us in John 6. They're crying out against the Roman government of the Roman Catholic Church. They wanted Jesus. And the reason why they walk away the day that Jesus died and on that cross, they walk away in anguish and anger. And, and Peter pulled up the sword, we're going to fight, is we're going to conquer Rome. And that's not what the first advent was about. It says king of Israel, king of kings, king of the Jews, including the Pope, a Roman wrote, on a board, a sign, the accusation above the head of Jesus, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, Israel. You see the Jewish flavor in this hymn? I do. David's royal son, upon which that son, Jesus Christ, will sit upon David's throne, reigning from Jerusalem forever and ever. And then we close with this stanza with King, Jewish, again. Never church. Stanza number two. I was going to say stanza chapter two. The company of angels are praising thee on high. Oh, on attack, on attack, on attack. It did not say sing. You get Christian writers that say, supposed to say, that the angels say, <laughs> praising the on high. And we with all creation in, choir, in chorus make reply. The people of the Hebrews with palms before, their, before thee went. Our praise and prayer and anthems before thee we present. So angels. Well, we know the Roman Catholic Church and other agencies is New Age, and there's the worship of angels. Angels with wings, angels in your toes, angels showing up in your tree, angels peering, angels doing this, angels doing that. So, all creation. They gave him a cross. They rejected him. At the cry of Hosannas, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were upset. And the creation. We're told today, after this side of Calvary, to preach to all the creation, the creatures. Go in all the world and preach to every creature. Now the palms. John 12, 13 took palms of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blesses the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. John 12, 13 is in this hymn. 
Now, an anthem, I don't know if you knew what an anthem was, you know, we, national anthem. Anybody know what anthem means? A hymn sung in alternate parts. But in the modern use, a sacred tune or piece of music set to words. Taken from the Psalms or other parts of the scriptures, first introduced into the church service in, the Elizabeth, in Elizabeth's reign. I, where do you get the national anthem of this country having any scripture attached to it? That's all I'm going to say. Stanza number three. To thee before thy passion, they sang their hymns of praise. To thee, now high exalted, our melody we raise. Thou didst accept their praises, accept their prayers we bring. Who in all good delight this Thou good and gracious king. The Passion. Acts 1 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible, infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And Passion means number three of the 1828 dictionary of Webster, suffering forcefully the last suffering of our Savior. Again, we've got another passage of Scripture. I, you know, we attack the Catholic Church and all the... It's passions in the Bible. All right, so let's look at sang their hymns of praise. Now, this is where I got to... This is the angels that sang, you know, at the birth of, of Jesus to the shepherds, which they did not sing. And I'm going to read to you, I'm going to read to you John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke about the event of this hymn as Jesus comes into Jerusalem. Took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him, John 12, 13, 20, and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, Thy king cometh, sitting on the, on the ass's call. This hymn matches what we're reading. These things understood not his disciples at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remember they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. The people therefore that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of the grave, raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees therefore said amongst themselves, Perceive he how he prevailed nothing? Behold, the world is going after him. And there, ha there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. I saw I saw cried, but I didn't see singing. Matthew 21, 8 through 11. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and sprawled them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, Galilee. Can I make a bunny trail moment here for a moment? Can I step out for it? They said, Who is this? Jesus has been in the world 33 and a half years. He has been three and a half years preaching, doing miracles. He has just nothing but of God. He is sinless perfection. And they didn't know who this guy was. Who is this guy? Coming? Who is this uproar about? You mean they couldn't tell the man that had a, had a lifesaver around his head? You know, the Catholic Church draws that lightsaber around them, or that rainbow, or that aura, or that sun disc, or Baal's disc. You would figure if Jesus Christ had the Baal disc around his head, they'd be, oh yeah, look at his head, it lights, it must be Jesus. Or at least get him confused among the 12 disciples who probably had the, you know, their, their heads lit too. The fact is, they say, well, who is this guy? We don't know who he is. There was no halo. <laughs> 
13 men running around Israel with halos around their head. I think you would know, or at least, okay, which one of the 13 is that one? So you can rule out the halos. All right, come back to our study. Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 14, 25 to 27. Very I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine. This is the last supper. Until that day, this is after the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the mountain of Olives. There's the only singing I see. And it's after the Lord's Supper, which you do not eat the body of Jesus. You do not drink his blood. It does not do magic tricks by the priest to make it the actual and literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. It's a wafer and it's grape juice or hooch, whatever you use. But this is where I see a song sung, a hymn. And that would probably have been out of uh, Psalms. Luke 19, 35 to 39. And they brought him to Jesus. And they cast their garments upon the colt. And they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice, praise God with a loud voice, for all the mighty works that they have seen, saying, you know, we get a problem with these hymns, not this hymn, but there's a problem with, with the hymns that I have seen so far. They don't under word, understand the word sing and say. Now they start with an S. They may end with a G, but they're not the same word. Somebody needs to go back to elementary school and learn how to spell. Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. So see, everybody wasn't happy. So, in the stanza three, they sang their hymns of praise. I don't see that. And only him pray, as we saw is after the Lord's Supper. I mean, just trying to be honest, truth with truth. Listen, the Bible, the King James Bible inspired by God, the hymn book is not. We bring our prayers, it says. Uh, Except the prayers we bring, who in all good delights, thou good and gracious, not to a king. We bring our prayers to our Redeemer, to our Savior, but not our king. Now there will be a time in the millennium for those who get a reign for serving the Lord. We will be getting king, we'll, the uh, Revelation 1 says, but that's not now. Jesus Christ is never king of the church. He's king of the Jews. So I'm going to say is, this is an okay hymn. It's got some, I'm not going to say fault. I mean, there's, yeah, there's some issues here, but man, if you want to raise up Jesus Christ as a Jewish person, and Jesus Christ is going to sit king of the Jewish people, of the children of Israel, and the glory of God that he came into Israel, and that he suffered and died according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You want to put that fact too? Okay. Everything else, I mean, I include it. Maybe I'd make a little, before we sing all glory, law, and honor, I'd address some little short little issues here, but we seem worse. We seem great. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst and 10 being the greatest, I put it as a 5. But remember, there's a lot missing, too. We don't know. And I don't know if it's out there. Maybe somebody will go look it up. But I said that there were what? Uh, where did I write it? There, there are 39 verses or stanza. I've got three. The three that I mentioned right now, the three that is in the hymn book that I have. Okay? And I'm going to make, like I said, I put it on a scale of five. 
And I'm going to make a little notation here that with the hymn book that I have and the hymn book that I use somewhere else, we, we mentioned a few hymns ago, a couple of them, about the virgin being capitalized. Okay? And I said, hey, listen, that's making Mary God. Like I said, you had the capital K for king. You have the capital S for son. You have the capital O for one. That's Jesus Christ and his deity. And I said, when you take a hymn and you put a capital V for virgin, you make it marry a God. And when we went to the scriptures of Isaiah, I'm making this little note right here because, you know, I, I found something out. Isaiah in the Bible never puts that V as capital for Mary. She's not a God. The Hindu that I had that I'm not... I'm not going to say what. I don't know if I can because the copyright laws on that. This hymnal says capital V. Makes her a god. There's another hymnal that I've used or using. And it did not make the V capital. So we've got hymnals that are not the same as other hymnals. Though the same hymn. Yet it's not written the same hymn. So let me say the fact is, uh, the hymnal that I'm using, and the hymnal that you may have in your lap if you're using one, or at church, wherever you have one, or looking online, it may not match. But as far as your Bible, get a King James 1611 Bible, and it will match my lessons. It will match my preaching. It will match my teaching, because that is... The infallible word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit. The hymn books are written by man and only by man. 